All right, whenever you guys graph secant, you need to think of, um, well, you got to remember all these, like all the, the letters that, that shift it. Okay, we have the, the A, the W, the H, and the K. Um, they, they shift our function. But whenever you have secant, I want you to think about cosine. So we're going to graph this first. We're going to graph cosine first, and then the last thing that we do is the secant part. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my cheat graph and get my, my four lines going on here. And then we have to um, um, get, get the period. So don't forget cosine looks like this. Uh, and the period normally is 2 pi. Okay, so normally the period is 2 pi, but because we have a w right here multiplying to the x, and in this case it's a 3, we're going to have to find a new period. So we're going to take 2 pi and we're going to divide that by 3. When we divide that by 3, um, actually, we don't even have to simplify it because it's already simplified. So 2 pi over 3 is going to be our period, so we put it right there. In order to find our other numbers, we have to take uh, 2 pi over 3 and do what to it? Divide it by what? 4. four. Now, why, is it, why do we divide it by 4? Because there's 4 spaces right here. It's divided by 4 spaces. So we take this, we divide it by 4, which is the same as taking it and multiplying it by 1 over 4. After we do that, we get 2 pi over 12, which simplifies to pi over 6. And so I go pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, and then, that, and then um, we can simplify some things. This would be pi over 2, and this one would actually be pi... Sorry, this would be pi over 3, and this one would be pi over 2. Okay, um, after we get those numbers, the next number that we have to take a look at is the is the A. That's this guy. Now, we don't have an H and a K, so we don't have to worry about a phase shift or a, a vertical shift. It doesn't move up or down or left and right. So our next number that we have to worry about is the A, and the A is 3. So that means our first point, which is normally at 1 on our cosine graph, is going to be up at 3. We're going to move up 3 spaces. And so I put it up 3 spaces like so. And then we go, the next, the next point would be the midline right here. And then the next point would be your minimum, which is going to be three spaces down. And then we're back to the midline, then back to the maximum. Now we can draw our uh, line. Okay, so now we have our cosine-looking function. Is everybody cool with that? Anybody have any questions? Nah? Uh, remember you fixed that one, you had that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I did fix that. Actually, that, that's down four. Oops. Okay, so um, I put these numbers right here, and then, I, then we fixed it. There we go. All right, now it's fixed. Okay. So, um, now let's put this guy over on this. So, <clears throat> I put this first point. Let's see. You guys see this first point right here? <clears throat> it's on our midline. That's that point right there. Now, because we don't have to worry about the H or the K, we're just going to transfer this over here. Uh, now, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six tick marks right here, um, all the way to pi, then we know it's counting by um, pi over sixes. So that means pi over 6 goes right here, and then this right here we know is pi over 2. That's going to go right there. And then we just follow the pattern right here. It looks like every two tick marks we put uh, a mid-line intercept. In this case, it's also an x-intercept. So we put all those points right there. Now those points help us graph the rest of this. Now you see these two points right here uh, at the very beginning, these, that point and that point? Between these two points, the very first two points that we graph, uh, does that have a max or min in between them? It has a min. So we put a min right there, and then you just have to follow the pattern. After that, we have um, a max, which, is, which goes up here. And then we have a, a min, and then we have a max, and then a min, and then a max. Whoa. Sorry, hold on. That was, that was too much at once. Sorry for that. I pressed the wrong button. And then what we would want to do is connect those dots to see our cosine function. And the reason why we need to see our cosine function is so that we could see where our secant function is going to go. Now, some students don't do this dotted line, and you'll see why in a little bit. I just want to put the dotted line to get the familiarity of it. After that, you need to find all of the midline intercepts. In this case, they're also the x-intercepts. And then you need to draw on those intercepts the asymptotes. There, here's are my asymptotes. The asymptotes go wherever you have a midline intercept.
So there's all my my um, asymptotes. Uh, in fact, let's let's write that down now. Those are asymptotes. So we got um, what's the what's the first asymptote there? What was the x value for this? That's pi over six. So we put pi over six right here, and then uh, we have a pattern right here. It starts. It just repeats itself. What are we adding every single time here? Uh, let's see, that would be pi over 6, and then one more pi over 6. So that's 2 pi over 6s, right? So we would be adding 2 pi over 6, but what but what does 2 pi over 6 simplify to? That simplifies to pi over 3. So we're adding pi over 3s every single time, so we're just going to say pi over 3 n. Cause, and the reason why we're doing n is we don't know how many times we're adding it. You, you just keep adding it. You add it once, twice, three times, four times, five times to get the rest of the asymptotes. So this is what our asymptotes equal. Don't get confused. This, I know this says right here, this says pi over 2 right here, but that's the distance from 0 to there. I want the distance from here to here. And we know that these tick marks count by pi over 6s. And so this is 1 pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 6. That's why I have 2 pi over 6, I simplify it to pi over 3, that's why we have that. Okay? That's, that was a good uh, clarifying question, thank you for that. Any other clarifying questions? Now, after you guys get your asymptotes, it's the last part. We need to put the secant graph actually on here. So, here's our secant graph. You go to each max and each min, and you draw a parabola. So, here's the min, draw a parabola. Here's the max, draw a parabola. Here's the min, you draw a parabola. Here's the max, draw a parabola. And you just keep doing this all the way. Why? Because that's the graph. Here's the, the min, draw a parabola. And actually, we have one more max right here. You draw half a parabola. <laughs> so, and I also hope that you can see that we didn't actually need to do this dotted line thing. And so if you didn't have the dotted line, it might look a little cleaner. We just need to know the maxes and mins. I put the dotted line there because um, we're familiar with that. So it looks a little cleaner like that. Let's, let's look and see what this looks like on, um, on, on Desmos, just so you guys can you know, get a really clean looking picture. There it is right there. You guys see it? So that's what it looks like on Desmos. And then um, we had a couple other things that we didn't fill in. We didn't fill in the period. Uh, we could fill that in really fast. Uh, yeah, we already did it. It's 3 pi. Oh, thank you. 2 pi over 3. Um, the phase shift uh, we, was none. We didn't move it left or right. Oh, x-intercepts. Guys, look at the black lines. Is it crossing the x-axis anywhere? No. So it's none. Well, we used the cosine to help us find where the max and mins were. That's, that's the end game for cosine graph. These per purple dots are not the x-intercepts for secant. Secant are these black parabola things right here. Okay? They're not crossing the x-axis. Good question. Now, what about the range? Now, for the range, you look at the y-axis. That's the, that's the range axis. And you always start from the lowest number. What is the lowest number possible for the y's? Uh, you're seeing negative 3 right there. But look, you see these arrows? They're pointing down. So what is our lowest y value? Yeah, that you can't know. So we put negative infinity. So we put negative infinity right here. And then as we come up from negative infinity, where does it stop? It stops at negative 3. And so that's the interval for the bottom parabolas. And then we have this emptiness. And then it starts picking up at what number right here? So I'm going to say union. Union is the same as like an and statement. Union with 3, 2. And then uh, I go from 3 all the way up. Oh, we got more arrows. They're pointing up, which means it goes to infinity. So that's our range for that. Do we have a y-intercept? No. Only one right there. There's none down here. There's one right there, which is 3. 